Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoovalux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissui, salam alaikum. Welcome, chesh and yakshi mash. Welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to do something just a little bit different from Dyson's because they're boring me. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to give a mention to Mohammed Aziz. Uh, he is somebody that comes into work. He's one of the delivery guys. And um, he's a really, really nice guy. He's subscribed to the channel. So I just wanted to say Shukra Mohammed. Thank you very much for that. So I've got this Electrolux 502. And it's been sitting in my living room because I was meaning to put it on eBay. And uh, someone said to me, oh, do you happen to have a 502 for sale? And I was like, yeah, I do actually. He said, I haven't put it on eBay yet, but I've done work on it before. I've cleaned it up and tidied it up, but I haven't done anything to sell it. It doesn't really mean anything. I have another one similar in slightly better condition because the bumper on this is missing. Um, but everything else works really fine. It's got a lovely original MK plug. I have put a new cable on it. So I've got a nice long cable, about seven meters. So I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll sell it to you. And what I'll do, first of all, I will give it a, another wipe over on the outside and give it a bit of a machine polish just to see if we can get this looking a little bit better. And uh, we'll pack it up for him and I'll show you how to properly pack a vacuum. So, without breaking. Oh, also as well, the brush roll needs a little bit of uh, oil in it as well. Right, Zach, what are you wandering over there for? Come on. Quick. You're stuck now. Come on. Go sit with your sister. And behave. Oh sh up to everything they are tell you. As soon as I start rolling the camera and I start filming, they start exploring things. <laughs> anyway, let's get these nice rags clean. Wet I mean sorry. I just put a batch of these in the um washing machine, they're all dry and fluffy now. I don't use um, fabric softener with the towels. Because uh, it seems to affect their absorbency a little bit. Okay, so the top hook on this is working really fine. I'll tell you what I'll do. And I will do it after. I'll switch it on after. I'm just going to give it a wipe over. Like I said, I've done this when I've had it. I've had it about 18 months. Um, so I've cleaned it all out on the inside. It's really good. just wanted to give it a freshen up. A little bit of a machine polish, plastic polish and um, sell it on, post it on. So it's, it's discolored quite a lot, unfortunately. Uh, we've got model Z502, production number, 900-4420, serial number 043. Uh, I can't tell how many watts it is. I think it's 240 watts. Right. Let me... Just wiping this over. Uh, now I've removed the suppressor in this one, so it doesn't have a suppressor, so it's not going to go bang. Just flip it over. There's no damage to it. The handle on this isn't cracked, which is always something that goes wrong with these. Is a cracked handle. There we go, that's all I wanted to do for a wipe over. And what I'm going to do is I need to oil the brush roll. So what I'm going to do is get you guys a little bit closer and we'll take this apart and we'll have a little look inside it. So I got my Phillips screwdriver here, so I'm going to take the base plate off. Two big screws. I 
can't remember where I got this from, actually. I'm just going to take that off. So the hose on this is not in good condition, but he is aware of that. Uh, at the end of the cap here, both ends of the cap. So what I'm going to do is put some proper grease. Where's my grease pot? Uh, I'm sure I brought the grease pot over. I'm still trying to find my way around everywhere since I did the um, move around. Just gets harder and harder to find things. Grease pot, anybody? Grease pot? Big pot of grease. Yay, I found it. So I'm going to do two things, actually. I'm going to drop a little bit of oil around the bearings. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease over that. There we go. Excellent, that will help them a lot. That's that. Very easy to do. I'm gonna give this another quick wipe up. But I did clean the inside of this. Right. So what I need to do now is I'm going to take the back, the little, the thing is working on it, but the thing has come off the connector, it's there. Okay, so now I'm just going to... the hose out of its holder which is easier said than done It's coming. There we go. There. So I'm going to give the inside of this a clean out. Now I watched Steve from Mad About Hoovers. He did a video of this on how to uh, oil them, the bearings and stuff, and this step by step guide on how to take it apart, which definitely made me a lot more confident on doing it on this machine. Give it a clean over. Give this a clean. See there's a split there and that's split. Right. I've got some spare pipe in. I'm going to use 
So I'll come back to you in a second when I got some spare pipe. Okay, so I got some piping here from an old turbo power. So I'm just going to cut this ring off. little monkey ah, there you go I'm just gonna wind wiggle this piece in so I need a cloth to do to hold If I can, it will fit. Just gonna take a little bit of feckling. Right, okay. Let me pop you on pause while I do that. Okay, managed to do that. I got it on. It's a bit of a feckle, it was a little bit tight, but I got it on. Excuse me for burping then. That's disgusting. Uh, right, so the next piece of the puzzle I need to put in is this end. This has got some tape on it, which I really don't need. So I'm just going to cut this blue tape off because it doesn't need it. It's going to be tight enough in there. So it doesn't need any additional thickness to it. Right. Let's check. See, this is, it's tight. But it's not a bad thing. There we go. It's just a bucket to get it on this one. Twist it around so it's in the right position. And let me check. No. <laughs> there we go. That is tight. Oh, it's upside down. Yay, there we go. That is now on tight. It's a bit more flexible as well, this one. Let's put the brush roll back on. And that just fits. Perfectly inside there. Excellent. Now, let's close this up. Big screw. Big screw. One. Two. Excellent. Pop that cover back on at the back. 
and that is now much better with this much better flexible hose. So if you have any turbo power, um, that's the turbo power two or three hoses, the thinner one than that. It's a bit tight, but it does fit in. So let's switch it on. I think that sounds more like the bearings on the motor. Sounds a bit grating. Hang on a second, let me try it on the floor. Right, okay, let's unplug it. Uh, let me remove these. It's a rubbish. And I'm going to take these off again. off Let's take that off I take these off. These are really well made, really good quality thick plastic. Six of them in the washers have come off. Now what I need to do is use something. This will do. Let's hold that up. So that when I remove oh, there's another screw down there. Gently move this 
off. And this is a big old bath motor. Now that's all I want to do is the commutator Let's get to the bearings. So let me just Unplug the motor. There we go. Just get the belt out the way. Right, I can see the bearing there. Let me get some oil into it. It's as dry as a flip-flop in the Sahara Desert. Taking the motor out. Right, I'm going to leave that for a few minutes to soak in and uh, come back to it, put it back together, and hopefully, uh, Steve did a video of this, and so you can't really do anything more to, like, to strip the motors apart. They really are pretty much impenetrable. So this is as far as I'm going to be able to get and I hope this helps. The buyer in is incomplete, uh, he knows exactly what is wrong with it but I did say that I would have a look at that noise that it was making so the least I can do is to take a look at that motor and uh, what's the matter with it right let's leave that for a few minutes and I'll come back to you and we put it all back together and we'll see if it's made any difference okay so it's been about 20 minutes so let's put this beast back together 240 volts 425 watts I can see it nice and clear now right <coughs> Put that back into place. Let's get the wire holder into place. It looks like an odd kind of um, jigsaw piece. Let's put that back on like that. Let's put that back on like that. Excellent. Make sure all the... What's wrong here? Uh, hang on a second. What's wrong? There's something not right. Uh, I don't like fiddling with these too much because they bloody break. Does it come? Hang on a second. I think that goes through there. Okay. One and two on. 
Okay, that's on there nicely. Seal is on nicely. I'm not going to tighten them up until I put them all in. So this isn't too bad actually to take apart. It's not as bad as I thought. All my Electroluxes <coughs> need to have the motors oiled. I've done one. I will have to look back at what one it was um, and do the other ones. They all seem to suffer with dry motors for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they just didn't use a good enough quality grease on the motor. I, I, I don't know. Who knows? But we will soon find out if this sounds better. Right. Now I can tighten up all the screws underneath. It's midweek, it's a work week, but I'm not in until 11 o'clock in the morning. So I've got time in the evenings to faff around with all these. If you stay to the end of the video, I'll show you my trash find. Right, let's... Let's plug it in and see. I, sound, I know this sounds a bit strange, but it does sound a little bit better. I think I will leave it running for a few minutes um, to let the grease and oil or whatever go through to it. And maybe that will help into the bearings. But it sounds ever so slightly better. So let me just unplug it. Uh, <laughs> I'm confused. I'm confused. Let's put them on. And that, and that. So this is on next. I need to put the wheels on and the little clips. Clips go in there, in there, and you just uh, put them on, and they clip on that side, in there, and there. Excellent, so that's on. I'm pleased with this hose. I think that's really good. It's much better than it was before. 
because it's a lot more flexible now. Oh, brush roll glue. Put the brush roll and the belt back on. There we go. Make sure these are housed incorrectly. Screw this back in. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this run for five minutes and let's see if it has made any improvement. So I've left this run in for about 10 minutes and it's definitely sounding better. It's not perfect, but it is definitely a lot better than what it was. So we will call that a bit of a partial success, I think. Right, so let me clear the bench of everything. Now, I said I would do a little bit of a refurb on it for him. Um, but like I said, he's fully aware of the condition of it. Um, and it does work. It's completely safe now that the um, suppressor's moved, removed from it. Let me unplug it. Voila. And I'm going to get the bench set up and I'll do it on fast forward because I don't want to bore you to tears. But we'll give it a quick polish with the polishing wheel and uh, machine and stuff. Um, but I'll do it in fast forward. So I'll be back with you in a second. Polishing is all done. It's just full of the residue, res yeah, residue. So I have to put some of my demon shine on and then wipe off the polishing residue. This isn't a restoration in any way. This was literally just a quick polish cleanup uh, for him. But it definitely looks a lot better now after a little bit of wax on wax off wax on wax off daniel san <coughs> oh hello squeaky jeep Definitely looks a heck of a lot better now with a little bit of um, machine polishing. 
That V36 is fantastic stuff. I just need them to sponsor me. Right. Let's spray the back. Now, I think I might be mistaken with the um, suppressor because before I started polishing this, I had a look in the handle um, where I know on the 502s, uh, the suppressor is, that's where the ones where Roger had to remove um, and I removed mine. So I have a feeling that I'm talking through my exhaust pipe when I'm talking about removing the suppressor because I think it was that thing that I saw on the motor. I'm not 100% sure. Because when I took the back handle off, to be honest, I couldn't see any room for where a suppressor would go. But I can't recall off the top of my head, so it might be the one that I saw where the wires connected into them by the motor. Maybe it didn't have a suppressor at all, I don't know. Although it must have. Right. Doesn't she look lovely? One last. Oh, actually, uh, let me get my spritz. Hang on. Hang on, hold your horses. Oh. I can't find it. It's somewhere in my car stuff. Just give it one last spritz with some demon shine. Lovely. It hasn't taken any of the discoloration off, but it's definitely made it just a little bit more presentable. And I'm sure that uh, my friend who's buying it off me will be able to find a bumper or an alternative to make it look a bit more original. Right. Absolutely lovely. Okay, let's plug it in again. I haven't got a bag in it, so I'm not going to be doing any vacuuming. doesn't sound too it doesn't sound perfect but it doesn't sound as bad as it does I think what he could do is what I'm gonna do what I've done with the other one was that when I, I took the motor out and um, cleaned it and sprayed inside the motor as well um, and that did a lot of help with one of the other ones so But it's definitely made it a lot better than what it was. All right, so this is just a quick video on this. So let me come around. And like I said, if you've been good and you've watched to the end of this video, I'll show you my trash pickup. Let me come around the other side. So there we go. That is my lovely, now shiny looking Electrolux 502. Definitely looking a lot better after a little bit of a machine polish. You can actually see. I turn it the shine on it not looking bad at all right so for all you viewers who have stayed to the very end yesterday I pulled into my drive there's only three houses on our drive on our on our road and I saw something next to the recycling bin and I was like oh well I can't leave that there what was it? It was this. This goblin. This is the vacuum that I have just rescued from the side of the road. I am officially Sam Watson. Picking up trash vacuums from the side of the road. 
So there will be a video coming on that. I haven't even switched it on. So I have absolutely no idea e if it even works. But uh, we will certainly have a little look at it and a bit of a laugh and see what we can do with that. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe for more videos. If you would like to donate to the channel, I've provided a link to my Amazon wish list. I'm always looking for spare parts and belts and whatever you can. There's little things in there and big things in there. Whatever you can to help me would be fantastic. And you'll get a shout out if you wish um, when I go to unbox them and stuff. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, y'all. Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoover Lux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissui, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Yakshimash, and good day y'all. So I've just finished doing this vacuum cleaner in the previous video, as you might have seen. So I messaged the guy that's buying it off me and took him all the pictures, showed him all about it, and he's still happy to buy it. So what I thought I would do is, this literally is going to be a very quick video is just on how I pack the vacuums so especially like these old vintage ones because I recently got one not vintage really but and it just it came in this box actually but it was a complete disaster so what I'm gonna do is pack up this vacuum so I don't know if you can see properly a bit awkward. Uh, oops. Actually, it's very awkward. Hang on. Oh my god, really? Right. That'll do for now. Let's get rid of all this stuff. So, this is the box that I'm going to be sending the vacuum in. So, this vacuum will fit in in its entirety but that's still not a good idea what I'm going to do is first of all get some tape so I'll tape and I'm going to unhook the cord from here and I'm going to tie this together because what I'm going to be doing is sending the vacuum with this like so. Alright, and I'm packing it in. Like so, like this way. Right. So first of all, before I do that, I need to line the bottom. And there's loads of packing stuff in here. That it came in. So I'm gonna put some of this back in. The bottom of the box where the base is going to be that's where it needs to be protected the most that is where i'm going to use this piece of polystyrene so that the base of the vacuum is the protected the most
and lay the vacuum like so. I'm now going to be using lots of bubble wrap to protect it. This is his most vulnerable side. So that's the majority of the packaging that came with the vacuum. Now this box is slightly too big, as in tall, so what I need to do is shorten the box a bit. So what I'm gonna do for that is move this like so. This was my knife. Let me just get my knife. I'm just going to disappear a second while I do this side. Any of the excess packaging I cut off will go back on the packaging again. There we go. Okay, so I need a bit more packaging around this side. So this box is full of newspaper. So I'm gonna use the scrunched up newspaper. On it. Now this may be a bit of a nightmare to unbox, but at least it's going to get there completely protected and in one piece. I'm not taking delivery of it brand new. It just needs to be protected. Right. Where did I put my... Excellent. There we go. So, I, where's my knife? Where's my knife? <coughs> Where did I put my knife?
Oh, it's all going wrong. Okay. Now what I'll be doing is marking on the box this way up so they know basically which way is up. It's not pretty. I'm not packaging for the Harrods. I'm packaging for protection. The funny thing is, the people who sent the vacuum where it came all damaged, they put fragile with care. I think it's just a sign for most couriers to try and damage me. There we go. Sweat on doing this. And just a few more on this side. <laughs> this might seem excessive, but I don't care. I want to protect it as much as possible. So there we go. Flatten the tape out. And now that got a nice polystyrene base to it. That is how that should have been, sorry, hubby just came to the door. That is how it should have arrived to me, but it didn't. It was with minimum amount of packaging and it arrived broke. So this one is being sent, not touch wood, but this one is now being sent off to its new owner. So thank you for watching this little snippet video. Sorry for my sweat on, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye, y'all.